Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here and it's Brick Haul O'Clock with two packages from subscribers and one from Bricklink.com. Lovely. Okay, very exciting. Anytime I get some packages from my subscribers and I'm going to start with those and push my Bricklink one to one side. But uh, yeah, I think I'll start with this one from Sweden because it's the smallest. It's quite appropriate. It's got a woolly mammoth on the front and one of its stamps actually because uh, obviously I've just got a woolly mammoth that I need to start playing around with and adding a caveman scene to kind of like the Flintstones. Is that all I need to open? It is. We've got a package of stuff and we've got also a lovely letter. Uh, so I was very pleased to see that this time the package from uh, Sweden actually has various child toys written on it rather than adult toys, uh, the package that went to my neighbours. Uh, adult toys from uh, Sweden usually meaning something uh, a little less sound. But anyway, here we go. Uh, dear Robin, I started packing this together in December. I think my ambition was to send it to you to be part of your Christmas subscriber brick call, but as you can tell, it's just been a tad delayed. Anywho, uh, I asked if you would mind if I sent you some custom stuff and you said you didn't mind as long as I don't get you addicted to it, which I hope I won't. Oh dear, <laughs> this could be dangerous if it's lighting or personalised stickers. I mean, where's the end? That's the reason why I don't usually uh, go for them myself. Um, if you look at the bags, you'll see there's a bag with custom printed four by six glass pieces. Oh, that sounds very interesting, I must say. Uh, I thought these would be a great look on your art museum being used on the windows on the left and right sides. Mmm, that's interesting. In the bag there are also three oil barrels, which I thought you could use wherever. Uh, in the other bag is a deer, since fallow deers have been introduced in the UK. I thought you might be able to use it somewhere. Okay. Uh, they are supposed to have been introduced in Sweden as well, but I've never seen one or even heard of it. So <laughs> I guess it could also represent a seeker deer. Have your choice. Uh, the other bags have genuine Lego parts. The bag with new pieces are some I thought you'd find useful uh, that I also had a surplus of. The other bag I put together with a mind of helping you populate your fairground, but I also found a few torsos I don't know how to use and thought maybe you'd have some idea of how to use them. Oh, okay, that's a good challenge. Well, that is all. I've declared the package as child toys this time. Oh, that's what I was referring to earlier, in case the package ends up delivered to your conservative neighbours. Uh, are they still looking at you funny? No, actually, it might have chilled out now, actually. <laughs> I think they were, it might have been my imagination, but it seemed that they were looking at me funny. Um, but they're all right now. Uh, give my regards to the lovely Mrs. Hood. I will. Cheers, your merriest man, Matthias. P.S. I was about to send this package out in May, but I remembered a few more parts for you. Parts I bought specifically for you on Bricklink during Black Friday. I thought you could use them under the sea. I thought a torso piece could be used as a shell for a giant underwater isopod-like creature. I'll have to look that up. <laughs> so this package has only been 11 months in the making. <laughs> well, thanks very much, Matthias. Uh, I'll look at all these with great interest, especially those glass pieces. So here we go. Right. Ah, okay. So I think that's the under the sea piece you're saying about an isopod. So iso would mean same, wouldn't it? And pod would mean, well, what, body? So it's probably a one-parted body creature. So yeah, that's kind of like a carapace. I'm, I'm, sh I'm assuming that's Batman's torso, actually. In fact, it almost certainly is, isn't it? But um, yeah, it could be a bug, couldn't it? It's just screaming for legs coming out of the sides and maybe almost a scorpion tail <laughs> coming out the back. Or maybe that's the front, who knows? Yeah, that is an interesting challenge. I like this piece. I had no idea about it at all. Or maybe it's Kylo Ren or something like that. Anyway, good piece there. Some gun belt type pieces for uh, big figs. Uh, yeah, I think I've got one of these, but these could definitely be weeds because the um, holes in them mean that you could put something colorful on them, whether it be spiky bits or flowers or leaves or goodness knows what. Oh, so there's the deer. The fallow deer. So is this custom? I don't think I've seen this. But, oh, it says custom on the bag. So <laughs> that probably helps me work out that conundrum. Right, so this is basically a reindeer piece. Is it? Is it even Lego? No, it doesn't look Lego to me. I don't think this is a Lego piece. And it's got this interesting printing. Nice flash of white on the front. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's very well done. Yeah, it's quite interesting. So... Yeah, not actually Lego, but that could go in the city. 
You'll have to tell me what you think of the people, all you purists, if you think they should make it into the city. Uh, I'm a bit torn, to be honest. I mean, the problem with all these things is it's kind of like gateway, isn't it? If I let this in, then what's next? <laughs> but I do like it. Yeah, yeah. Tell me what you think, everyone. I'll be really interested to hear. Here are some, oh, here are the custom pieces. So there's some windows. I'll cover those in a second. Here are some oil barrels. You see, the problem with these is, now I'm, I'm more adamant on these. I don't particularly like these. Because although they look very much like oil barrels, they don't look a thing like Lego. They look like I've got some G.I. Joe pieces and put them in my city. So unfortunately, Matthias, I'm probably not going to include these. I must say, uh, if you want them back, let me know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they just look like G.I. Joe pieces to me. So that's them. Now, these are very interesting. Stained glass window pieces. So you'll have to tell me as well in the comments whether you bought these or whether you made them oh they're all different i mean they almost look like they should go in a very modern church but one of the rules i have in my city is not doing religion or politics so it could still be a very old building a building that maybe used to be a, a meeting place or a church or a i don't know a mason's building or something like that that's now used for something else or an old bank or something like that so yeah they're very interesting but i see what you mean about the art gallery because they do look very artistic don't they yeah, I'm going to have to have a play with those. So I think these are genuine Lego pieces just with printing on them. And they've been well done, so they look really good from both sides. Yeah, so those, I think, can make it in the city. So we've got a yes, a no, and a maybe at the moment. <laughs> so here we've got the... Ah, I had this on my list, actually. Not that I need another canoe desperately, but I just... I like getting all the things in all the different colours. So here's a magenta canoe, probably from a friend set. So that is nice. Maybe I can have somebody doing some sea canoeing in my cabinet. Who knows? Got some hair pieces. That's an interesting red one. It's a friend's one because it's all squidgy. Never worked out why they do that. Is it so they take the uh, sort of attachments better? That's kind of an Elsa hair piece as I see it, but in a different colour. From Frozen. That's all I know on Frozen. One person's name. I've probably got it wrong as well. <laughs> a hair piece with the bunches, which I like. And the cycle helmet in uh, dark azure. Very nice. And then here are some used need washing pieces. I have to remember watching this back, which are which, because I'm going to muddle them up. So we've got... Oh, he looks good. I like him. Yeah. I think that's probably an old... Oh, no, it's the Explorers. I nearly made a wrong guess there. No, it's the Volcano Explorers from the City Line. But I like his uh, frontage with all these sort of uh, safety belts and so on. We've got two of those. So I should be able to use them as workmen somewhere. Might need to cover up the back. But then that could be any old business's logo, really, couldn't it? A <laughs> very old waiter torso. Another studio's one with a director. I've got him uh, before. But that's a really nice sort of waistcoat or vest, as you call them in the States, of course. Another baddie. Uh, red torso. Ooh, is that Timmy? Is that Timmy torso? Timmy! <laughs> it's something like that from Time Team, isn't it? Uh, what? Oh golly, that's a very old space one, isn't it? And um, blue and black. That is interesting. Yeah, I quite like that as well. Are they sort of goggles that have come down? I think they are. Yeah, very interesting. Yes, there's some very good parts there, Mat Matthias. I really like these. These are definitely my favourite. And the museum might be the right place for them, as long as they don't obstruct our view, of course. Uh, so I'll have to have a play around. I'll take them up to the Lego room and see where they look best. But yeah, I'm liking those. Hopefully you didn't spend too much. Uh, everyone else votes on the deer. Uh, and wow, this is going to be really fun under the sea. I don't think that looks too much like a belt uh, that it can't be used there. So yeah, that's probably what I'm even more excited about. So thanks very much for your contribution to the channel. Very thoughtful indeed. Good, good. Well, from one package onto another, this time from the Netherlands. And if you want to send a present to the channel, you can to the usual address, PO Box 11048 Nottingham, NG89 QS. Uh, and I'll feature it on a future brick call. Uh, do, if you're sending it from abroad, remember to mark it as value under $30 as a gift. Uh, and that'll help it get through to me unmolested. And then also, 
if you do have one with a tracking number, then do send it to me via email, which is in my about page, because then uh, I can make sure to look out for it in case the distributor has a bit of an issue. Anyway, we've got a letter. I've got a great big pile of stickers and an absolute mound of parts in here. So before tipping that out, I'm going to read the letter. Uh, Dear Robin Hoodbricks, I've been enjoying your Lego content for a while now and I absolutely enjoy watching your mocks. So much creativity and positivity. Keep doing what you're doing and I can't wait to see another video. P.S. I know I sent a lot of random pieces but I hope some can be of use. Greetings, M from the Netherlands. That's E-M, M, and a lovely little picture, a pencil drawn of me. <laughs> I really like that. I'm going to add that to my collection of... Uh, drawing sent in, kind of fan art sent in by you. It's not just pieces that we need on a channel. It's a lot of love, appreciation and uh, pictures and photos of your cities I really like as well, or even where you've done uh, similar builds to mine, maybe even improved them, who knows. Right, so I'm going to start with these stickers. We've got some uh, racing ones for obviously a Nissan uh, vehicle. Yeah, looks good. Good for advertising around and about and if I do a, a car seller. Uh, don't recognise that one, but it looks like another vehicle again. Oh uh, yeah, some sort of McLaren. So two of those. You must have quite a car collection. Some good Christmas signs. Oh, they might be useful. North Pole. Oh, North Pole. I can use that on my uh, eventual Arctic scene, can't I? <laughs> With all these signposts pointing in different directions. Oh, that's awesome. I never thought of that. I think I've seen this sticker sheet before, but I never thought of using it there. So this has just uh, made that a reality. And I can probably use those uh, somewhere Christmassy, come the uh, uh, season. Uh, then some more there with a fuel one. That might be a good line for a um, fuel station or a petrol station or something like that. This sounds nice. I don't recognise this, but that is... What is that? I remember that sort of three-tailed wolf. Is that is that Monkey Kid or Ninjago? I think it's Ninjago, isn't it? But yeah, we've got all... Oh yeah, because there's Master Wu. And well, all sorts going on here. And I've got a feeling I've got that wrong. I think it's something else, isn't it? But um, anyway, some really interesting stickers and screens here, all with uh, Eastern characters on, looking really good. Oh, no, that guy's Ninjago, isn't he, with this, with this snake head? So, yeah, it probably is Ninjago then. Anyway, some leftover ones there. I'm sure I'll be able to put those to good use. They look really interesting, very vivid. I really like this one down here. It's almost an advert for a TV program or something like that. So that's very cool. Oh, two of those. <laughs> and we get a bonus one this time. Uh, which way up is that? There we go. It's almost like a sort of trading card one with Master Wu on it. Very nice. Then these, which I think are roof tiles from a um, Chinese New Year set. Or is it that boating one? Can't remember. And then some more racing ones for a Camaro. Obviously, you don't like your stickers. <laughs> oh, and some nice Ferrari ones. Oh, wow, I should be able to use those, no problem. They look really nice. Look at that badge one. Yeah, so obviously you, you're not a massive fan of all your stickers, especially on your cars. And then I am a massive fan of too many stickers on every flat surface. So <laughs> we work well together. Crikey. Now, look at this. I've got a couple of big bags, so I'm going to pull them out ah, first. I've already lost one small piece underneath my desk. I'm going to pull all these big bags out, and then I'm going to tip out the loose pieces as well. Wow, this is random. I think you've um, probably been to some... Oh, ah. oh, I nearly lost another piece there. Uh, I think you've been to some pick-a-brick walls and things like that. Or maybe you're just emptying out <laughs> the things you can't find are useful. Now, these cords I use for the fence around my airport, but in silver. This is a harder colour to use this, what looks like medium nougat or just nougat, I don't know, but yeah, what can I use those for? I think I might need ideas for that. They're not that plant-like. I mean, maybe kind of with one sort of flower or something on the top, but I don't know. They look a bit too thin in a way. Could use them as another fence somewhere, but uh, yeah, I can't immediately think of a good idea for those, so ideas please people. Some red track from the uh, roller coaster. Now, with three slopes like this, I'm <laughs> I'm not sure I can use that. But then again, you could make a really interesting uh, bridge across a road if you wanted some advertising hanging off that. If it was a racetrack, that would look really good. I don't have a racetrack, but maybe you could use it as some uh, that way up <clears throat> as some building support 
or building decoration or something like that. You can almost imagine the front of a big uh, railway station or maybe a airport having that sort of detail on the outside, you know, three sort of columns of this. Yeah, so that could be used structurally. That's got my creative juices flowing. That's very interesting. Have to play around with that. Lots of grey pieces. They'll be useful for under the sea, as will the uh, sand coloured ones. Those will definitely get used. I've been buying some of those recently, so that's good. Random little Technic parts that may have leaked out this bag of more random little Technic parts. Always useful to have an array of those for when you're experimenting with setting fairground rides up or something like that. And there's a load of them in there. Oh, that's where they've leaked from. There we go, some more coming out. So that's fine, very good. Yeah, I'll be able to use those. And I'm using them in all sorts of things. Uh, I've started using them in some builds for under the cabinet, uh, in the cabinet, the 20,000 bricks under the sea. I don't want to spoil exactly what yet, but um, yeah, lots of different things where these Technic pieces come in very handy. So let's open the rest of these bags and have a good look. We've got is that printed. Can't work out what that says. Oh, it's a, is it a wheel sort of burning rubber? Can't really work that out. But yeah, oh, it's on both sides. That's quite interesting. These rock pieces in white will be good in the Arctic. Definitely, maybe mounted that way. There's the sort of walls of, a, of an ice cave, kind of like in the Return of the Jedi and that, and these bits, so that's all good. Oh, these are quite interesting. I don't know, you must be buying different sets to me because I haven't had these before in this color. I don't think I've had these before in this colour. Yeah, so lots of really interesting parts there. Might be able to use those under the sea as some element of a plant or something. They're a bit too straight-sided in a way, but maybe all together? Yeah, have to play around with that. Quite interesting. And then some trans uh, bright green pieces. They might be able to be used under the sea. Oh, one of these. Oh, two of these in dark turquoise. They'll definitely go under the sea. Very nice indeed. Cool. Wowzers. Great big bag of orangey bits. Oh, I haven't had these before. I think these are the mech sort of knee joints that have uh, recently come out. So I'm having trouble focusing today. Here we are. Uh, so yeah, they might be quite hard to use, but they'd be really good for making a building, wouldn't they? With all different angles on as the base for it. And then you could probably have a a pillar coming up from the hole to sort of hide the gap between the two straight edges. Um, oh, I needed loads of those in my fairground. I might still be able to use some actually. Yeah, so you never know when you're going to use all these pieces, but um, having them makes it a lot easier to use them, of course, because you can play around with them, especially in uh, mechanisms and so on. Yeah, I reckon these could be quite good uh, making a building. Let's see. So if you did it sort of like that, I'm just sort of making this up as I go along. Hold on, that's not going to work, is it? I need something that's... Oh, there we go. Let's just borrow that for a minute to link two of these together. And then you could almost have one wall there, one wall there, and then have something round coming up to block the hole. And I'm using just the pieces right in front of me here, but you see what I mean? Yeah. Even that. Yeah, so you could get quite an interesting wall shape with, you know, a wall there a round brick in between them and a brick there uh, and keep going and even make an octagonal building ultimately. And I suppose it'd be about the right size for inclusion in a city, about that big. So that might be worth some playing around with as well. Oh uh, yeah, lots of really interesting pieces, shapes and colors and all sorts of different angles in that bag. Moving on. Wow, you really have been very generous here, you know, um, with your absolute wow look at those beehive pieces in kind of a gunmetal color that's very interesting i don't think i can use those or maybe i can under the sea i don't know but they're a bit of a funny color maybe they could be those sort of um undersea vent type things or something like that or maybe extinct ones or i don't know ideas for those as well they're very interesting pieces uh yeah you've been very generous with the diversity oh there's a third and fourth one uh, of pieces that you've sent in. Lovely one of these sort of bolder pieces, but in trans bright green. Don't think that's a neon one, no. Um, yeah, wow, so much food for thought. I think that can be used as some sort of uh, undersea piece as well. Absolutely amazing, hinges, all sorts. Wow, very nice, very nice indeed. Oh golly, useful pieces too, like that. Different colors, 
Very good. Uh, you must have decimated your own collection is my only concern with all, receiving all of this. Um, but maybe you've got even, even more. Lots of treasure chests. Three more in this relatively new colour, I think, uh, for treasure chests at least for me. Uh, most of mine are in brown or other brown, old brown. So yeah, they're very nice. I probably don't need any more treasure chests for under the sea though, people. I've probably got about 20. <laughs> There'll be one every sort of, uh, you know, three paces in every direction. And I mean minifigure paces as well. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, lots of good stuff. This one looks like more sort of small or minifigure pieces. Oh, wow, we've got some minions. These were my first Lego, or for that matter, anything, uh, minions. We've got this one. <laughs> I love that angle the eye is on. He looks very quizzical indeed. And he's got some sort of, is that a Kill Bill sort of Uma Thurman suit? I don't know, <laughs> but it's very cool. Maybe it's just a lab suit. And there's one going, whoa. And then this guy who looks like he's saying, oh, gelato. <laughs> and chasing after an ice cream van. That's probably my favourite scene from uh, a Minions movie. Uh, when they all get kidnapped trying to get an ice cream. Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to include these in my city, but they could be uh, inflatables or a sort of scene uh, at the fairground or something like that uh, to attract the kids to a ride. I could even minionize uh, a ride that I've already got, perhaps, to give it that theme. I do very much like the characters. They're cool as anything. Very nice. Thank you for those. What else have we got in here? Ninja sword sort of backpacks. Oh, I think you can put clips on those, actually. They aren't the sword ones, are they? So that's quite interesting. Get some really interesting um, attachments on those. A black skeleton. Ooh, with... Is that a glow-in-the-dark face? I'm going to have to check that out. Hang on. No, doesn't glow in the dark. <laughs> These do. Ooh, lovely. Or rather, uh, under UV light. Don't pick me up on my little errors. Uh, apples, hair. Ha oh, I've got this uh, this character somewhere, but it doesn't mean I can't have two. They could be disciples of some weird sect or something. Uh, apples galore. You must have had quite a few spare apples. Another of the black skeleton bodies. Uh, interesting Ninjago torsos. Oh, that's the torso for the uh, guy with the mask I just pulled out. A ghosty one. More skulls. Wow. That's a bit scary, isn't it? They should have done these in glow in the dark rather than in this spring green colour, if you ask me. But nonetheless, lots of little pieces. Very nice. Lots of hair pieces. Lavender heads. I'll be able to use those under the sea. Purple uh, hats. Nice. This looks like loads and loads and loads of Technic pieces. So I'm not going to tip all that out because it will just take me ages to pick it all out again. <laughs> but very good on the same lines as the one we got before. And this looks like loads of minifigures. Wow. So we've got some cloaks. A brown cloak. A, another brown cloak. A black cloak. And a olive green cloak, I suppose you'd call that. Very nice. I have to use those somewhere. These are, oh, these are that dragon's wings. Look at those. I don't know how I'm going to use those <laughs> because I'd need a great big undead dragon, wouldn't I? But I can't really use them with the other side. Yeah, ideas for those. I don't think they're going to be very easy to use. I mean, it might look a bit like plants or just decor in a sort of um, uh, Halloween type scene. Yeah, it's very interesting anyway. Very nice. Massive great big wheels. Now I could use these not as wheels and use the texture as kind of a drum almost for an air conditioning unit on a roof or maybe some sort of cargo. I could even stack them to make the real big barrels even taller. I've got quite a few of those. Oh, I think you've been uh, buying these pieces on um, pick a brick or maybe you've just been buying certain set too many times because we've got quite a few of similar pieces. We've got this silver hair that I think of as being um, Oh no, it's not the same as uh, Toxiquita's hair, is it? But uh, yeah, very similar sort of style. I don't know what I'd use silver hair for. Maybe some sort of female robots. <laughs> Fembots or something like that. Very interesting. Uh, some uh, cloak sort of lower halves. Ferrari torso. Nissan torso. So this, this is all your racing guys coming out again. And that must be the Camaro. Uh, or not Camaro because it's Dodge. 
Uh, yeah, testing my car knowledge. And then we've got loads of these snake people from Ninjago. One, two, three, four, five. How am I going to use those? Is this going to be another sort of evil gang of people in Brick Nottingham? Wow. We've kind of got enough. We need some good guys. I don't think these guys look like good guys, though. <laughs> look at that. I like the fact that they've sort of reversed the colouring of these. So we've got some really, uh, you know, black with orange bits on and some orange and black bits on as well. But very generous indeed. We've got some more races here. Here are the McLaren ones. So it seems like you've given me half of the bodies to all of the cars that you've kept. <laughs> anyway, this is an absolute mountain of bricks and it's very generous indeed. And I'm sure I'll be able to use a great deal of them in all sorts of future projects. So thank you so much for that. Uh, I'm just going to go and try and find the bit that uh, I dropped on the floor. Uh, and then we can get on to my package from Bricklink.com. But thanks so much again, M and Matthias. Well, as we move on to my package from Bricklink, I've sort of uh, made a hole for us to look at parts and I'll uh, bring them in one by one. But I keep discovering more and more things. Here's a nice sort of stack of heads with some really interesting ones on it. I really like this robot head here with the gritted teeth, especially like the back of it. And I think that's just some sort of connection on the back of his head or something like that. But to me, it almost looks like a single eye for a robot or something like that. So maybe you could get something that cover the genuine minifigure face and just use that. That'd be great in my cantina. So yeah, I really like that. And red bananas. I think that came from, I think these are guys from a Kung Fu set, aren't they? And that's why they are dressed in that getup. Anyway, uh, onto my Bricklink order. Uh, and I've got, well, loads of parts for, well, the final parts for my uh, express passenger train, 60337, which you'll be uh, glad to hear or not glad to see the return of, I don't know. Um, but uh, essentially I needed more parts to finish off those double deckers because I didn't have enough of all the glass pieces. So the final ones of those are in here, maybe a few other parts as well. Uh, and then I just, uh, as usual, got as many different interesting things as possible. So this is interesting though i thought it was described as trans blue and that's not very trans it's kind of opaque but anyway this is from the character surge from hero factory 6217 uh, which is the 2012 version of that character uh, and this is just for a plant under the sea so i'm gonna have to try and hide all the mechanical elements of it and just have that as a plant sort of coming up from somewhere in that blue color yeah, looks pretty good. I'm thinking that these bigger pieces I'm going to have to hide might be easily put in the wreck of the Silent Mary, of course. And if they're out of sight, then uh, all you'll have is this sort of coming out of one of the gaps, uh, the many gaps in that ship. I don't know if it'll work. Uh, big, long, large figure tails in blue and dark green. Oh, wow. That's bigger than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> so this is apart from another uh, Hero Factory character called Stringer this time, also the 2012 version, set 6282. Uh, and this is a Sonic speaker. Uh, yeah, there's two on the set, but I was only able to get one. Uh, Sonic speaker, is there another kind? Uh, I'm not sure about that, but I kind of wanted it to be uh, an oversized boombox sort of speaker, uh, maybe in the back of a minifigure's car or something like that for a teenager. <laughs> Uh, but this is absolutely huge, uh, so I don't think that's going to be possible, really. But um, it's definitely an interesting piece to play around with. Maybe it could just be some sort of port or attachment on the outside of something under the sea. It's definitely got a very interesting texture. Or it could even be sort of a, an SSP weapon if there was a barrel coming out of there or something, presumably. Uh, yeah, so ideas for that. Maybe SSP would be best. Uh, some nice big dish pieces. So these are for corals and things. Some are going to, oh, four I've got. Uh, some could be overlapping, I was sort of thinking, and almost be in a random uh, pattern like that and be umbrella corals. So that's what they are. And loads of tentacles in what I always think of as hot pink, though that's not the official uh, name for the ca uh, color in Lego terms. Oh, a rock monster. You can never beat getting rock monsters. And this is the hardest to find one uh, because he's in the trans neon green. I think he's the most popular. He's called Sulfurix. And unfortunately, he's a bit scuffed. I mean, so it's hard to tell because some of these scuffs on these figures are actually in the design and some aren't. So he's a little scuffed, but not too bad, actually. In fact, he's losing a bit around the chin, but I don't think it really detracts from him too much. 
I just loved them with their mouths half open, uh, maybe grabbing a crystal to shove in their face <laughs> and enjoy. Nom, nom, nom. Yeah, they are very funny indeed. So I love those. I'm going to have an absolute army of rock monsters by the end. I think I've got some more in here. Can't see them at the moment. There's one. A blue one. The blue one's called Glaciator. So he's all right. he's got a bit of scuffing on his chin as well. Maybe a bit on the back. So he's obviously just been in a loose brick collection. But again, I don't think it's too bad. You see, this one is just a lot more glowy and interesting than the darker blue. But anyway... Uh, let's move on. Oh, there's one of those final pieces for the roof of my express, uh, express passenger train. Tried to say two words in one then. A Duplo piece. Wouldn't be a Robin Hood Bricks haul without something Duplo or <laughs> Belleville or something weird. So I got this one. Uh, I've got this sort of flower part before, but I got this one again just because it is in coral colour. And coral colour kind of glows a bit under UV. So you see he's really glowing. But then that kind of fluoresces a bit and changes colour when I sort of move it on and off. So I thought that might be quite interesting. And yeah, I suppose that's all it is. Quite interesting. Uh, he's very cool. <laughs> quite interesting. Awesome. <laughs> anyway, I thought it was worth a go. It's a little underwhelming for what I hoped. Ah, here's the other bit that I needed for the train. This is for the second cockpit. Uh, or um, rather locomotive. So those are the pieces that I needed just to finish off uh, those trains. Lots and lots of little cones in interesting colours, probably for under the sea, including these dark magenta. Long chain, you can never have too many of those. Yeah, I think this person had lots and lots of cheap parts where I just thought, well, I'd better get them all, I guess, uh, because... You know, when you got the beginning of Dinosaur Tales in dark blue or these pieces, the propeller pieces, these were two pence each, I remember, uh, in blue. I just thought, well, something could attach to that and maybe have tentacles coming off it or something. I mean, you could even attach these onto that uh, and have them all as a big, you know, you'd barely see the blue bit once they're all in place and it'd just be a great big patch of them. And then these, these two are glow in the dark and yellow ones as well. Let me just wind this down Whoop, gives me a bit more space doesn't it so they'll be really useful more bits for under the sea i think will be more dishes literal dishes <laughs> pink ones from the uh, friends and other lines like that turbine piece in trans light blue i've had a purple trans one before but not one in trans light blue i just think that's a really interesting and probably plant-like shape in a way uh, so that's been on a couple of Nexo Knight sets and a Bionicle set, including 70780, Protector of Water, from 2015. So I like that a great deal. More of my sort of arm pieces in all sorts of different colours. Got this for a, a uh, prize at the fairground. It is the knight from the Lava Dragon 3838 uh, small game from 2009. Just thought he was rather jolly, actually. I really like him, especially with his crown on his chest, which is the uh, sigil of Brick Nottingham. So that is really nice. Wow, I wish there were more of those. I might try and put that back on the list. I really like him. Uh, da -da, little grills in black. Need loads of those. Always going through those and always running out. So I bought a load of those. So arms to hold all these undersea pieces under the sea in some complementary colours, like dark green and olive green. I figured I could clip something on there and attach it to a bar or the other way around if that was more uh, conducive to what I was trying to do because getting all these things to look like actual plants is going to be quite tricky if you ask me. Here's a torso that I've had before as part of the Hidden Side set um, Shrimp Shack Attack 70422 from 2019. I used it as the ghost underneath my castle in the um, dungeons but I thought Figured that I might want another two, uh, well, four-armed, two-torsoed, a uh, ghosty, maybe in my underground, um, uh, haunted underground station, or maybe somewhere else for Halloween. So I just thought I'd pick up another one of those, because I've only got one, and you can't really see it. And I like having the variety in my city, so I got that. Glad to have that. Ah, now these I definitely needed for my uh, train as well. These lime plates, eight longs. And maybe some of the smaller ones in grey, I can't remember. 
but there's a lot of one by twos in black and dark gray in there as well because I always just burn through those and if you don't get the colors right everything looks weird so there we go more cones including some trans glitter purple and some trans pink and then I've got a few of these pieces that I just needed to uh, complete an old set that I'll be adding to my train so four of those that'll give you a clue or you can look it up in the catalogue if you're that interested. I bet it's the only train with four of those. Uh, oh, there's some more of those for the roofs of my train. This is why I really had to wait. Uh, so there's one, two, three more. They're no different bags. So four of those and one of those. I think that's what I needed. Very interesting as well. These one and two on these trans blue two by two 45 degree slopes. Yeah. They're pretty interesting, aren't they? They came from Blaze Brigade 6554, which is a uh, fire station from 1997, uh, which was clearly in the middle of Lego's bad period when they're making incredibly awkward looking sets. But I do like the one and the two. I haven't decided where I'm going to use them. I mean, it's very good for where they did, you know, Garage 1 and Garage 2 or Bay 1 and Bay 2. Uh, so, yeah, I'll have to decide where to use those. But ideas for that, or it could even be just number 21 as some sort of store or something like that but um yeah i like those yeah they're very uh visual i mean you can read that from a long way back can't you so that's good like uh only had one set of those or i might have bought more well here's a little bag and they often have very interesting pieces in them and this is no exception so we've got one more of these uh <laughs> angler fishes for under the sea i've got an absolute load of these now so i'll probably have them in uh um, I was going to call it a flock then, <laughs> a flock of fish. No, a, <laughs> I can't think of the word. <laughs> shoal, there we are, shoal of fish. I nearly said swarm. Uh, yeah, I just can't get it right this morning. Not got my brain in gear. There we go. So he's really nice. He came from the uh, uh, Lego Ninjago movie series figure, uh, Shark Army Angler. Uh, then I've got a nice goblet shaped wine glass in green which has been in all sorts of Hobbit, Scala, Belleville sets, all sorts, uh, even 10211 Grand Emporium from 2010, where they're on sale in a department store. So that's nice to get one of those. They're quite hard to get your hands on. Ooh, well, that's different than I thought. So here's two really interesting pieces. This is the black helmet with a sort of horns on that is the Shadow Vladek helmet uh, from sets like 8876 Scorpion Prison Cave from 2005 which is a bit of an odd name for a set. I mean, is it a scorpion? Is it a prison or is it a cave? <laughs> which is it? <laughs> but this one almost doesn't look Lego or maybe X-Men perhaps. Almost looks like sort of the helmet that Wolverine might wear or something like that. But um, I thought it was uh, complete and around the back, but it's actually one of these ones that's pivoted uh, around a normal sort of motorbike helmet and kind of the, uh, can lift up like that. But it looks menacing. Uh, with my new castle, like a castle behind me on the floor, completely unopened. Uh, yeah, I haven't even been able to build that uh, for recent days, but um, I must get started on it. I thought I might um, try and get some more uh, Lego uh, castle baddies to kind of be storming that or something like that in my scene. So there we are. That's a very interesting part. And then this is even more interesting. So this is kind of the spiky hair that's off uh, Mad Scientists and uh, lots of characters like Dr. Disaster in the set 8969, Four Wheeling Pursuit from 2009, which is an agent set. Now, he had this white hair, but it had green streaks, sort of lime green streaks on it. And according to the catalogue, there's never been just a white one without the green streaks. So I thought maybe this was an old one where somebody sort of rubbed off the green. But if that is the case, there's no trace of it. So maybe it was just, I don't know, part of a builder minifigure. Uh, selection one time or something like that I don't know so I was kind of intrigued given that this part doesn't technically exist to get one um, so anyway I'll be giving that to a slightly old white-haired uh, mad scientist in the future I guess uh, but yeah it doesn't look like it's been scraped at all though the green does kind of flake off if you're not careful with that character uh, in time so it might have just all fallen off relatively naturally just looking for the lego uh, mark on the inside and i pretty sure it says it though i can't really see uh, it looks identical cool uh then we've got all this a bago slime as i call it uh, the kind of energy effects that have been in four of the uh, hidden side sets like 70432 haunted fairground from 2020 
Um, now I bought another one of these. I've used all of the pieces in the bag I already had uh, in my haunted fair, or, uh, not fairground, in my haunted subway. Uh, but I got the idea from one of my subscribers to get more of these pieces and use them as people vomiting when they've come off certain rides in my fairground. So if you think if you position it very carefully and that is coming out of somebody's uh, mouth, <laughs> it's going to be a very graphic and horrible scene, isn't it? <laughs> Where's a minifigure? I can't find a complete one. I'll use this poor forest man. But um, yeah, you imagine him, you know, with that coming out near his face, it'll really look like he's um, blowing chunks, as they say. <laughs> Sorry to lower the tone. I completely lowered, lowered, uh, lowered the quality of this video by saying that, but nonetheless, uh, there we go. That'll be really good fun uh, to have some chunks being blown. Uh, blue seats there for the uh, train as well, so I'll put them over here. Some rather normal plates in different colours. Might be for the train, can't remember. More parts for under the sea. Oh, and some pickaxes for all my power miners. I mean, they're going to need loads of these. Except I'm not going to really use power miners. I'm going to use just genuine, normal uh, miners from uh, Lego City. Lots of those for under the sea. Some flowers for above ground, probably. Lovely. Uh, yeah, there's another one of these rock monsters. Yeah, so this is the red one. Meltrox, he's called. And he's got that same scuffing. In fact, his is relatively poor, actually, around the chin. Oh, and definitely on the back as well. He's probably been in the collection a bit longer, but still he's usable. I'll just put him nearer the back, I suppose. Looks just as fun. Yeah, so I've already said that I don't think um, the, the miners are the good guys in my uh, under the ground scenes. I think uh, with the nasty miners stealing crystals, I think I'll reverse the uh, uh, polarity of goodies and baddies and uh, have <laughs> these guys winning and uh, defeating the evil miners. Uh, that'll be great fun, so I'll put him with those two. Here's some interesting bits. I'm always running out of Lego string. So when I see a reel with string, I'm like, yep, I'll have some Lego string. I know I can buy string, but I never do. I never have any around when I need it. So basically, yeah, why not get some that's already there? Uh, here is a slightly thicker one, which is basically a, a fire hose, but I figure I might need something really heavy supporting in my uh, 20,000 bricks under the sea cabinet maybe one time. I don't know, um, but I'll be able to use that if it's a bit uh, too heavy for the normal thickness string. One of those, don't remember buying that. And then, hey, a tread plate sticker. Another thing that it wouldn't be a Robin Hood bricks video without a tread plate sticker, but I really like this one because, well, it looks like it's a two by three. Let's uh, see, here's some two by threes. So will I be able to move it onto two by three tile? Yes, in that dimension. And yes, in that dimension, brilliant. So I haven't actually got a two by three tread plate before, and now I have. And I can just put it in the street or I don't know, <laughs> somewhere. Uh, I'm definitely moving it off that piece though. That'd be great. Isn't it weird and sad how excited I am about a two by three tread plate sticker? <laughs> you need to get out more, Robin. You need to get out more. A bracket piece, just one. I must have needed that. I think it might be for the Jacob's bogies on my train. Uh, some brown, just one by one bricks. And these dark azure cones, which I thought I could kind of stack like this for something under the sea. It's an interesting bright colour. Oh, imagine that was angled and like that. Yep, that looks under the sea. I mean, it's over the top for real life under the sea, but this is Lego, remember people? It's Lego and it's supposed to be fun. Uh, yeah, I get a lot of comments now and then um, on certain builds saying, oh yeah, it doesn't look very realistic. It's not supposed to look realistic. <laughs> if you want realistic, you've got to build a, a model kit in my mind. But anyway, uh, some more plates, modified plates for all sorts of things. Oh yeah, they would be for my Jacob's bogies, definitely. Uh, maybe them as well, I can't remember. And then, is this the last bag? Yep, this is it. But this seems to be the stickered parts. And that sticker there, just grab us for some shutters, which I think I needed for my, near my, well, new warehousing that I'll have near the uh, harbour. So I keep buying these bricks with the extreme advertising on. And there's a third one there. And these three bricks are all from the uh, 4x4 with powerboat 60085 uh, set. I use these on the side of buses and all sorts of things where I need some advertising to fill up a space. 
then we've got this, which is from a Power Miner set, 8958, the Granite Grinder from 2009, which is a really cool small one, actually. It's got elastic band in it, so you can kind of... Uh, I think when you drive it and push it along, the front sort of goes do -do 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 like it's a pneumatic drill. So that's pretty cool, actually. Uh, a lot of those power miner sets look a bit ordinary until you actually have them built. And then you realize that the play feature is really quite cool, actually. They're definitely very good toys anyway, um, even if they aren't the best display pieces. Uh, yeah, so this is just a, a, a gas tank um, sticker for the side of that that was missing from the one that I may or may not have purchased. <laughs> Uh, and then here we've got some secure transport signs. One looks very straight indeed, and one looks very not straight indeed. Wow, that looks really bad. But I can improve on it using my patented hot tea technique. Yes, that would be very good. Uh, so these came uh, with the set that has my favourite Doc Ock character in it, actually. 76015, Doc Ock Truck Heist from 2014. Yeah, I think that Doc Ock is better than the one that even came with the Daily Bugle. I kind of like the clunkier, clickable, positionable arms. And this one has the big lab coat with the yellow hands and neck. So it's much easier when I yellow him up by changing his skin tone to yellow, like all of my minifigures. Uh, it looks a lot better. So I think I'll still have a Spider-Man Doc Ock uh, scene in my city at some point. Uh, probably at the opposite end of the city from the Bugle building, because of course that's the uh, Brick Nottingham post now. Uh, so these will just go on some cargo, either in the cargo yard or in the harbour now, most likely, because that yard is so full. Uh, but I like, just love the really big padlock. I mean, it's it's really good to see from a distance, isn't it? I mean, again, you know, you can't not uh, see what that is all about from a great way away. So that's great to have as well. And that is everything. Oh, wow. What an absolute mountain of Lego. Well, I think the award for the most interesting and thought-provoking parts go to uh, Matthias from uh, Sweden because this is just so interesting. I mean, it really does look like a torso, but it also really does look like a body uh, or the carapace of some sort of beastie. Uh, so I'm very interested to play with that, uh, but also these pieces uh, for windows in the city. Uh, and then, hmm, I'm not too sure about that. I am sure about the barrels. They're, they're not coming in. This... I want, I want uh, some opinion on that. I mean, if I start doing this, then it's, it's just Kobe Lego and all the rest all the way, isn't it? And you should see the amount of emails I get from all these um, Chinese and other uh, sort of, I think of them as knockoff. They're not really knockoff, but competitive brands to Lego. The amount of trials and things I get offered, unbelievable, uh, you know, huge sets. But I'm just, I just don't really want it all mixing up. It's complicated enough running this channel as it is. Uh, anyway, yes, yeah, so thanks again to Matthias. Uh, thanks again to M for the vast quantity of really useful pieces. And it isn't just um, uh, rubbish. There's all sorts of good stuff in here. I mean, wow, I don't have that. Uh, another sword, that would be really good for my castle. All these nice hair pieces, it looks like Krennic hair. I mean, I'm just discovering more pieces every time I look. So generous, it's unbelievable. Uh, and then as for my order, well, we've got all the parts we need for our train now. So that might be what I do on Friday, just to get that finished, done, on the tracks, uh, complete, fully double-decker, uh, with the cab car looking as good as the uh, uh, locomotive. See, I haven't seen that one before either. That's really cool. Um... Uh, yes, and uh, loads of other parts for other projects, loads of stuff for Under the Sea, lots of interesting sticker parts. I'm going to have to think about how to use these minions. Uh, wow, so much to do. <laughs> so, as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you want to send something to a future Brick Call, you can by sending it to the usual address here. Uh, and if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, I think we might just be finishing off that train if I can get all these pieces washed uh, before then. Uh, and then we can do the next part of our wonderful double modular mole build on Monday before another haul next Wednesday. So. Until all of that, see you! Now who would win in a fight between three rock monsters and three minions? There's only one way to find out. <laughs>